Welcome back everyone, this is Dash Renard. Today we are going back in time. We're sending you back to the future. August 26, 1346, the Battle of Cressy. It's one of the most well-known English victories in which the Welsh and English longbowmen defeated a far superior French force. I want to go over some of the nitty gritty of that. It wasn't just archers versus crossbowmen. There were a lot of other factors at play and I want to break that down. There's no better day than today when I've had tons of rain coming down and hopefully it doesn't land right now. So to give a picture of the battle, there's about 7,000 Welsh and English archers. I did a full video about the Welsh archers, check that out if you have the time. And there's about 5,000 men at arms, Welsh and English also. There was estimated something like 80,000 French, uh, but it wasn't for sure. And there was 6,000 Giannis crossbowmen. Now the Giannis crossbow, they would carry, it was about a 1,250 pound bow. And I'm gonna go over some of the things that were great about that and weren't great about that. One thing that definitively changed the battle was that as the Giannis crossbowmen came closer, a torrential downpour came. So what I have here is a 155 pound war bow. It's a beast to pull back and takes a lifetime of training to use. But one of the benefits of it is if you see a rainfall coming, you can take your shot. Rain is starting to come and you can take the string off. Now, if you know anything about bows, the wood can handle rain, but the string loses elasticity dramatically as it gets wet. So as the rain started to come, the English were able to quickly take the string off of their bows and hide it either underneath their caps or in their coats. So you take your string and you tuck it away somewhere safe. Now the crossbows could not be unstrung. It's a 1200 pound bow, you can't unstring it. So when that got wet, that limited the range dramatically. Now a crossbow, while it had way more draw weight, the range was still a little bit less than the war bow. The war bows could go 300 to 400 meters. The crossbow could get about 300 meters, but when it was wet, it could do probably half of that. So the Giannis crossbowmen came up and fired. They were well out of range. And what did the English and the Welsh longbowmen do? Well, once they got close, they took their dry strings out, set it on their bow, strung it up real quick as they were getting in range. And then you're ready to fire and you have the same range distance capacity with minimal setup time. You're all strung up. You have the same range as you would because your bowstring is dry. Load that bad boy up and send it down range. So what was the other big benefit? Well, rate of fire, obviously. For a crossbow, it usually took between one and two minutes in order to wind that thing, take a shot and go. The longbow had a much higher rate of fire. Now this here, as I said, is a 155 pound war bow. And what I wanna do is the wonderful Kevin Hicks from History Squad has done a demonstration showing it. So I'm gonna kinda of sync it up and see how many shots I can get off in the time it takes for him to wind and fire one. Tired though, getting tired. Ah. Woo. And what happened to those poor crossbowmen? Well, as they fled, the French were not too happy about it. So they took their cavalry and they ran the fleeing crossbowmen down. 
which is just kind of bad form in my opinion. But they got their comeuppance because the weather was not on their side. When you have rainfall like this and it is sloppy and gross, even me just being like 180 pounds, when I step in this with no armor or anything, it's just quicksand. It's mud. It's terrible. If you have a horse with armor and a knight with armor, they're not going to be able to move at all. So as you do charges, they're going to be slow and charges need to be fast in order to work. So if you're slowed down, that gives the archers a lot more time to fire at you and additionally hit the horse. Because you've seen on this channel and a lot of other channels, it's not going to punch through plate, especially if you're arcing it over. But horses, it's hard to armor the entire thing. So you're gonna dramatically lose the ability to do any damage because they're gonna get closer <laughs> at a slower rate and you can just keep firing those shots and slowing down their mode of transportation. So it was in these sloppy conditions and knights continue to try to charge up the hill over and over. And the archers would simply continue to be able to loose and slow them down as they came. And in doing so, they kept getting pushed back because the horses kept getting hit with the arrows. And it wasn't until later in the evening that King Philip conceded and retreated from the attack. So let's fast forward a little bit to Henry V. Now, one thing Henry V incorporated at Agincourt and at other battles in the Hundred Year War was an archer stake, simple archer stake. What it consisted of was just a sharpened piece of wood and they would stick it into the ground and they would sharpen up the tip of it. And then from there, horses are not dumb. They're not gonna run right into something that's sharp. So they'd be able to set up behind these stakes in here and they could take shots from it as well. And that's gonna slow the cavalry charge down. Cause again, with cavalry speeds, everything, the longer time they have to hit the horses, the worse it's gonna be. So you're just trying to basically mitigate their ability to come in on you and maximize your ability to get out as many shots as possible before you have to engage in a melee. So honestly, it was an earth shattering victory. It kind of shook everyone in France to the core. Um, there was a bit of luck, of course, the weather played a large part with that rain coming in, causing an inability of the crossbowmen to make those long shots. One of the most endearing things about archers that people gravitate to is this kind of like the common person soldier. The cavalry was generally the nobility, men at arms, people with wealth, and the archers were professional soldiers. They weren't paid well for their service, but they weren't nobility. And it's kind of like giving the lower class the ability to have a piece of wood and take down something that would cost lifetimes or years to buy a horse and armor and everything has a sort of lower class working person to it. Like that mindset, we don't have the money or the funds, but we have a bendy stick and another stick. And we're gonna stop a war machine. Next time you have an armored knight charging at you, just be ready and say, I have a bendy stick and I have a straight stick. Game on. From a distance. <laughs>